Hey everyone, welcome to the inaugural episode of Built in the Borderland. Today I am coming to you from the village of Hatch, New Mexico, and today we are talking about the ever important chili pepper. It's one of New Mexico's most important crops. In fact, every year in this state, farmers here grow more than $44 million worth of this commodity. But it goes beyond that, right? It's part of our food, part of our culture. I grew up in a family of Chile farmers on the other end of the Mesilla Valley. In fact, in my 20s, I actually made a feature length movie about Chile farmers. Cuidado, listen to me. Your grandfather was killed because of his chiles. His chiles? Yes, his chiles. His precious chiles. Someone wanted his chiles, his whole secret. And they killed him? For this? It was a terrible movie, but my heart was in the right place. So for the next half hour, we're going to learn more about this amazing plant and the amazing fruit that it produces. So let's get started. Let's get to know Hatch. Let's get to know more about the Chile. I grew up in, on the Navajo Reservation, but I live in Maryland, so I thought I'd never been here. Our day trip to this tiny town in southern New Mexico starts at this modest roadside stand where Pete Atencio has been selling his family's chile since 1986. You know, there's certain towns that just have better fruits than others. You know, we, we were mentioning the Pecos, Texas, cantaloupe, you can't get no sweeter, a Palisades, Colorado peach, a Vidalia, Georgia onion, and a Hatch chili. You know, we're just a little better than any place else. Maybe it's the name or maybe it's in our minds, we don't know, but uh, it, it just is. I have yeah. a feeling that you think it's more than just the name. Though, right? <laughs> right, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know no better than Hatch chili, I, you know, I've just, uh, I'm not saying we're the best, we just haven't seen anything better. <laughs> there are 13 Chile vendors in Hatch, and right around the corner, you'll come up on the Hatch Chile market. Sergio Grajeda has been a vendor in Hatch for the past 35 years. He grows his own crops as part of a family-run business. ¿Por qué tiene la fama? ¿Qué es, qué es lo que, qué pasa? Bueno, su sabor. Su sabor que es delicioso. I ask Sergio what makes Hatch Chile so special. Why is it so famous? He says it's all about the flavor. He says it's as simple as that and that there is no comparison. Green Chile season runs from August to October. And on a typical Tuesday, it's a steady stream of customers at the Hatch Chile market. The weekends are even busier, of course. If Sergio isn't inside the store selling Chile-related products, he's outside. And if he's outside, he's probably roasting Chile. All he's got is medium, uh, mild ones are out in the field, it's too wet to pick. Yeah, just do those. Sergio tells me that 2020 has been a year of ups and downs. Business has been good, and for that he's grateful, but finding workers has been difficult. Sergio tells me that locals in Hatch don't really work in the fields anymore, not unless they own the farms. He says most of the people picking the chile are migrant workers who come from Mexico. But the pandemic has made a very hard job even harder. Workers are worried about getting sick, and fewer workers are available because getting across the border to work is more difficult these days. Sergio has more than 60 acres of Chile in the Hatch Valley. But if it doesn't get picked fast enough, the Chile will turn red, and then it's not as valuable. But for now, Sergio and the rest of the vendors in Hatch are focused on this crucial three-month window 
that comes to an end in October or when the cold weather hits, whichever comes first. Entonces, sí, es duro. Sí, muy duro. Farming is a hard life, Sergio tells me. It takes a lot of discipline, but it's also very rewarding. And Sergio wants more young people to get into agriculture because he wants the traditions here to continue. So from roadside stands in the village of Hatch, we pivot now to the world of online sales. We're, we actually are trying to sort of be the Amazon of, of New Mexico products online, find ways to make things efficient and get products to consumers in a, in a cost efficient really way. More on that after the break. Okay, so I'm speaking now to Preston Mitchell. Preston, you're the owner of the Hatch Chili Store. Yes, sir. This is an, this is an online operation, wholesale operation, yeah. but also direct to consumer. Exactly. So uh, give me a sense of just from, you know, roadside chili stands to now a, a pretty brisk online marketing opportunity here. Tell me about, tell me about that evolution for you to, to move this product nationwide. Sure, so I, I grew up helping run a chili stand actually on the side of the road in Santa Fe, New Mexico for my grandparents on the weekend. Uh, so I would take in money and take orders and put, or, put chili in the roasters, physically roast it, deliver it to customers' cars. Uh, my grandparents kind of had a rough year weather-wise in late 90s, early 2000s, and I said, hey, you know, why don't we try selling your chili online and charging a little more for it and shipping it to people all over the country who can't get it. You'd have people drive through Santa Fe from, you know, even back east and stop and, oh my God, I'm so happy to have chili again. I haven't had this since I was a kid. You know, is there any way you could ship it to us? The cost was always really prohibitive, but as we started doing more and more volume online, we were able to get better and better rates on shipping, kind of grow the business and turn it into what it is today. In other words, you sensed that there was a demand for this chili as a young person. Oh, and then, most definitely. And you, you were able to then Cre uh, figure out a way to get it to more and more people. Mm -hmm. um, you've got to feel pretty good about that, right? It's exciting. It's neat to bring people a product that they really love. I mean, okay. you'll get reviews or you'll get emails sent in. You know, you just made my day. My order arrived. I haven't had, you know, green chili or I haven't had this salsa product or I haven't had chili powder or I haven't had, you know, a good Rieno. We do frozen Riennos and tamales too. Huh. Uh, all sorts of different products that people miss from their childhood. And to be able to get that to them in an affordable way and, and really just make them feel like they're still connected to New Mexico and connected to home. It's really neat. I mean, people will just write the most beautiful things on the website. You'll have to look at some of our reviews. We have 13,000 reviews from people who are just, you know, thrilled to have our products delivered to their door wherever they may be. Um, sensing that demand, I mean, I don't know how anyone could miss it. You would say, go skiing in Rodoso, and you'd be on a lift sitting next to someone from Maine. And they would say, oh, where are you from? And you say, I'm from Hatch. Oh, where the chili comes from. You know, I was there one time. I stopped by. I, I had lunch at Pepper Pot. It was so amazing. I wish I could get that in Maine. And you would, you would just hear that over and over and over again growing up from folks that either had lived here or had visited here, sure. moved away, or had even just heard about it because a neighbor down the street raves about how amazing Hatch Chili is. Uh, I, I don't see how anyone could miss that the level of demand there. And the industry is really growing, too. Preston, just, just, like, just like champagne in, in France, you can't have... You can't call champagne champagne unless it comes from champagne. The champagne domain in France. Yep. No, that's a great analogy to what we're doing here. So I actually sit on the board of the Hatch Chili Association, and okay. I help certify uh, growers as being from here in the valley. Got it. They can license a mark that goes on their box. I'm not sure if you saw that on our I boxes did. earlier. I did. But that mark proves that your chili was grown right here in the Hatch Valley of southern New Mexico. Um, we definitely compete with a lot of chili that's brought in from Mexico and repackaged as being from here. That's something that the association is really trying to put a stop to. Uh, you know, how important is this crop to the state? Oh your... my goodness, I believe that chili is extremely important to the New Mexico state economy. Not just in that it creates a lot of jobs, whether it's here in the field, in the plants where we're packing, but downstream jobs. Downstream jobs at processors, at food manufacturers. Chili is, is sort of central to New Mexico's identity and it's one of our only major export crops. I mean, we export a lot of pecans. Uh, other than that, it's chili and onions. Those are sort of the three cash crops that sustain the agricultural industry here in New Mexico. Welcome to the New Mexico State University Amy Goldman Fowler Chili Pepper Institute Teaching Garden. Every year we plant this garden to show the wonders of chili peppers. 
Yeah, my name is Dennis Lozada. I am the new chili pepper researcher at New Mexico State University. Okay, yes, yeah, so I'm uh, Dr. Stephanie Walker. I'm the extension vegetable specialist at New Mexico State University. Is it safe to say that you're both chili pepper experts? Is that safe? Well, yes, I, I've been working in chili peppers for my whole adult life, basically. Yes, I would consider myself a chili pepper expert. It does seem to me like this is the Napa Valley of chili. Explain mm -hmm. to me why and, and what it is that makes this area so so unique. <laughs> well, I guess with, uh, with chili quality, uh, it's all about both uh, genetics and environment. Mm -hmm. So with crop production in general, you're going to have the impacts of what are the genetics that make up this variety. You know, as we've discussed here for over 100 years, we've been developing green chili with more flavor uh, compounds. But then we also have a uh, an environmental condition here, it's really been conducive to just putting enough stress on those chili plants that it really brings out the flavor compounds. I think it's a fairly well known that if you, uh, if you stress a chili plant while it's growing, it will cause the fruit to become hotter. So it brings out flavor compounds if chilies are growing under stressful conditions. And I always say working with vegetable growers in general in New Mexico, this is, it's a stressful area <laughs> to grow vegetables. <laughs> Listen, since, since I've got two experts here on the line, I, I'm going to ask right now, what's better? And I'm going to start with you, Dr. Walker. What's better, red or green? <laughs> well, Christmas is best, of course. So you get a taste of both. <laughs> mm, yeah. Yeah, it's really, uh, you know, the variety of, you know, many people just think of chili as something that's either hot or mild, maybe some medium thrown in, but different chili varieties have very unique flavor profiles. So, you know, if you're a true chili, uh, chili connoisseur here in New Mexico, you, you go for a certain variety you like. And of course the varieties are gonna have different heat as well as overall heat profiles. So don't ask me if I like red or green. Uh, one of the varieties I love is Joe Parker that was developed Parker, by Dr. Yeah, Paul Boss yeah. at New Mexico State University. Mm. It's, it's mild with a little bit of heat and it just has that great New Mexico chili flavor. Are you gonna are you gonna jump in with an opinion on that, Dennis? Yeah, yeah. Wow, Joe Parker. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's amazing. Um, I've tried Sandia Select and uh, New Mix Heritage Big Gym, and they're on the same line. But yeah, really, definitely, lots of um, great flavor profiles uh, have been developed by the NMSU Chili Pepper Breeding Program. So in the past, the the ship has um done so there were breeding efforts to to produce the sandia select the joe parker so mild more flavorful types which reflect consumer acceptance so to answer your question i would go with christmas as well <laughs> All right. the debate is red or green Always. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You're going to venture there? You're going to venture into that? You know, if I was from northern New Mexico, I would say Christmas, uh -huh. but, but I'm not going to take that out. I'm okay. going to go green all the way. You're going to go green. <laughs> yeah. Listen, a lot of people want to be diplomatic and say Christmas, but you're going to, you're going to say green. No. A no, lot of people I'll, like the I'll green. Take a stand. <laughs> now, what's, what's funny is if you consider the chili pot of fruit, which is, it's, it is, yeah. it is, the red is when it's ripe. So True. you would think that the fruit is more formed by then, but what people like about the green is that it's tart. Right. Yep. yep. You uh, definitely have less sugar in the pod yeah. when it's green. Uh, you'll notice, especially with medium varieties, they will taste very sweet if you harvest them red. Even a hotter variety like the Sandia, if you were to go out there and take one of those red pods, just bite into the flesh without getting that vein, yeah. it would be very, very sweet. Are you hungry yet? Are you hungry yet? Coming up on Built in the Borderland, we take a break to grab a bite and sample a legendary culinary creation. They look me right in the eye and they say, that's the best cheeseburger I've had in my life. Hey, so all this talk of chili means that it must be time to eat. And if we're going to do that in the village of Hatch, I strongly recommend you make a stop at Sparky's. It's become a bona fide tourist destination for a very specific reason. The green chili cheeseburger, always. Sparky's uh, is a family business that we started, this is our 13th year. 
and it incorporates all the, the food items that my daughter and my son and my wife and I like, which is coffee, barbecue, and green chili cheeseburgers, and ice cream. We just, we just did a restaurant with all of our favorite foods. Everybody's excited about people coming in the hatch. They come in and eat, or they go other restaurants and eat, but they're in hatch. You know, we bring them to hatch, which is great. They buy chili, they buy curios, they buy all kinds of things. It's, yeah. it's, really, it's really fun to see everybody here. Before, it was so, like, not busy at all. Really? Yeah. It, it, it happened gradually. It happened gradually. When we opened the restaurant, um, the town had like 11 restaurants here, and they're all Mexican food. And, and I just thought, let's do something different that, uh, and, and specialize on it. And that was a green chili cheeseburger. Nobody really, they did enchiladas, which heck, we eat all over town. It's good Mexican food here in Hatch. It's really good. But we just went to fill an empty space, which was the green chili cheeseburger. I mean, there's something unique that's happening here in this kitchen. And what, what is that? Well, it's fun. You know, we, we have burgers and this, this recipe has been in the family for a long time, you know, and it's just like, you're not, you're not just eating burgers, you're kind of enjoying everything. And, and of course now we haven't had dining or whatever, but we will, we'll get it all back. There's something really specific about the green chili here, right? So let's, let's talk about how that also factors in to your award-winning food. The green chili we used since the very first day, we used hot diced green chili, not mild, not medium, we use hot. And, and the secret to our burger is we use a ground chuck, 80-20 ground chuck. Mm. The grill is 700 degrees, sometimes 750, which is incredible. We cook the burger and then we put on a quarter pound of the green, a quarter pound, that's a lot, yeah. of the green chili, a big ladle full and then one slice of American cheese. So what happens is the green chili is like center stage. It's not like a, you know, a Swiss uh, cheese or a mushroom or a romaine or a fancy hothouse tomato. All that stuff is great, but it takes away from, the more stuff you put on a burger, the more it becomes, it tastes like the stuff, which I'm kind of crazy that way, but ours only has four ingredients, bun, meat, green chili, and cheese. If you just um, smell the, the, the roasted chili and then how we season the meat and just put it all together with just cheese, you know, it's just, it just melts together. Now people are ordering triples and doubles. I mean, it's just amazing. And then uh, we had a customer come in and he ordered, we didn't have bacon at the time, and he ordered pulled pork on his burger. So that turned out to be an oinker. An oinker. And now people order double oinkers or single <laughs> oinkers. But it tastes really good, you know, yeah. the, the smoked pulled pork and all that. It's funny when you talk about what you have here and the decor, there's always those places that, to me, you can tell the places that transcend the affectation in the sense that sometimes people will put stuff up that doesn't really mean anything. Does that make sense? Almost like, oh, a, yeah. like, like a corporate kind of... Uh, yeah, sure. And then there's places where you can tell that all this means something to you. I, I think, uh, There is a story for... I, I didn't go to some warehouse or some right. dealer to get this stuff. It's real. Yeah. I mean, when we redid this room, yeah. it took me almost a year to get all this stuff up where it should be, where I think it should be. So he, we built it all and then he says, okay, here's, he just kept bringing the sides. <laughs> but it takes time to get all this. You, you can't just like, just put it on the wall and say it's gonna look right. Right. Everything has to be just kind of together. Tell me why Sparky's is so popular. Sparky's is just one of the places that's been around forever and everybody, it's tradition around yeah. here. You know, you just can't come through Hatch without having Sparky's. We'll be right back.
Remember those commercial chili roasters from earlier? Those are the industry standard now, but some people prefer to go old school. See, this one's looking good. That one's looking good. My uncle, Zeke Leva, is one of those people. At his home in Las Cruces last year, before COVID, he shared some helpful roasting tips. Okay, this one? Okay, let's, yeah. let's take this one here, and we're going to put it in the ice water. Yeah. And now here's the other thing. I take this off. Now, it's pretty much seed free. Or, or you can just pay to have the pros do it. Some of these machines not only roast, but they peel as well. So either way, you can't go wrong. So long as you're stopping to smell the roasted chiles and enjoying some of the finished product. Get a tortilla, warm it up, and just put it there with a little bit of, with a slice of cheese, no? And you're good to go. Hey, so that does it for the first episode of Built in the Borderland. I certainly hope you've enjoyed it. And listen, this is a work in progress. I want to hear from you about the interesting places and the interesting people that I should focus on. So until next week, I'm Robert Olguin. Take care.